Hello, finally we are back, as you can see, with our beloved E90 and we have a huge update. Not uh, that update that he is working right now on, but uh, it's just a hint. Rokas? Yeah? Where are we going to use this one? Somewhere in the engine bay. Okay, <laughs> I guess you can definitely understand what kind of engine is that. And if you do, please uh, drop a comment so you can guess where we're gonna use this engine. But now about E90. It's time to reveal uh, what we did. Totva, bring the goods. <laughs> it's definitely not finished. It's just the finished design of uh, our body kit. So Totva is going to put it on and you will be able to see uh, the complete view of uh, the front end and the back end. We're definitely going to reprint uh, these parts in uh, different plastic. Right now we used PLA just to print it faster uh, so we can adjust and uh, do multiple revisions. And after that, we are going to do it differently uh, using PETG so it's easier to sand, easier to prepare for uh, the molds and everything else. So this is just for you to take a look, uh, to understand the design, to see how it's gonna look. We already primed it a little bit, so it's in even color and uh, you can see the whole view of the body kit together. So we're going to use screws on the front end because we have already multiple holes on the front fenders and we don't care about it. Uh, we have different fenders for uh, the molds uh, that we are going to use later. And for the back, we are going to use some tape uh, because we want to uh, keep it hole free. In order to make the molds out of the rear fenders, we are definitely going to build wall body uh, of uh, composites. It's gonna be maybe carbon Kevlar, maybe it's gonna be fiberglass or maybe something else. You can try to guess what we are going to use. Oh, I already spoiled that we are not going to use uh, carbon Kevlar. So just try to guess what we are going to use instead. As you can see, we are pretty happy with the result. Definitely, it's not that tight when we are using the tape, uh, but uh, overall, the spacing and the design is uh, the way we want it. And uh, we have some ideas how we are going to fix uh, everything to the doors and uh, the body. We have some holes over here, and we are going to fabricate some kind of a bracket uh, to keep it together because uh, we were thinking about different uh, ways how we could uh, put it on the car and uh, this was the best. We had some challenges with the fuel cap but uh, Matas gonna tell you a little bit more about it. So uh, let's talk about the design. Uh, let me tell you briefly about the front end. Before we used to scan data from multiple shots because we used uh, our old scanner. Post uh, processing uh, after the scanning was uh, dif difficult and we didn't get very good result. So that uh, led us uh, with some issues when modeling. Not all the corners and edges were in the right position. In reality, when we put uh, the parts on the car, uh, a few weeks ago we, we got uh, our new scanner. We took a shot uh, and we managed uh, actually very easily to scan uh, the whole areas uh, that we need for the front from one shot. Post uh, processing was much easier I didn't have to work with multiple pieces and uh, the whole uh, surface was uh, more alike like in reality of the car. So I can show you uh, the differences between the previous scan data and the new one. Uh, we compared it so 
In the blue color, you can see the new one. Even we managed to scan the whole wheel or part of the lamp. So we scanned even much more and in one piece. While on the reverse side, you see the green and the yellow uh, colors are the old previous uh, ones scans, uh, which I had to put from multiple pieces. So obviously many lines that, that I couldn't align together. I tried to get as best alignment as I could uh, from those different scans, but I couldn't. So this is the best uh, I could get. And you see there is a, a big difference uh, if you compare bumper and the uh, fender angle, how they go together. I tried to model and use things with uh, such a scan and that's why we had a lot of problems because you see the angle is not right. After swinging a lot, I used the new scan data. So we managed to get our final results and we printed it, tested it and everything uh, looks pretty well. So now let's talk about the back. This is our actually a final model. The whole process in the, from the beginning is very similar as with the front. There were still uh, a couple major problems. Originally when we opened the fuel uh, tank cover, there was a five millimeters gap between uh, the edge, this edge and the uh, car's body. And when we put the whole overbody on top, there was no gap and even when we open the cover, it touched. So we had to change the geometry to avoid that uh, contact. And also we had to make sure that all the gaps uh, between uh, the cover and the our body are similar and constant. So it also was quite a challenge. Matos told you already about the challenges, what we had to do and uh, what kind of challenges he had with uh, designing. And you can see what kind of mess uh, brings the concept uh, when you have duct tape over here, you have blue tape over here. We had different revisions, different prints over here. You can see it moves around at the front. You can find some markings. I don't know, uh, Toto and uh, Matas had their own sign language uh, and only two of them understands what is written over here or over there. But there's something that we are missing. The design you already saw, the front end has that uh, cut out, and we really love it. It adds that aggressiveness that we wanted. The back end is just perfect, but we're still missing something. We definitely need a spoiler. But for that, let me introduce you to something. Maras already mentioned that we used different TT scanner. We had one on our own, but we were like, something is wrong with it, uh, because some of the dimensions uh, after we print uh, were not correct and etc. I decided to contact one company, it's called Shining 3D, and I said, hey guys, we are building a 3D printed body kit, and uh, we would love to scan our car again. Uh, because we were using a different brand 3D scanner and we are not quite sure if the accuracy is correct and everything else. And they said, sure, would you love to try our uh, Instar scanner or maybe the better one, the top level scanner? And I said, hey, let's, uh, let's try the entry level because we want to show you uh, what you can do with the stuff that you can quite easily buy and it's not that huge investment uh, when you are thinking how much time you can save. So this one is Ainstar 3D scanner by Shining 3D company. We are not talking and uh, publicly disclosing the accuracy of uh, 3D scanner because we said that we want to be 100% sure about the accuracy every time we are talking about it. And as this scanner uh, is entry level, we are not doing that uh, deep testing how we are doing with uh, pro level, best of our scanners, but we can assure you that uh, accuracy is gonna be much better than you used your TD scanner before. And we gave it a try and we were stunned. I think Matt has already showed you the differences of the front end that we had of the scan um, before and after the scanning with uh, Ainstar. The thing with this uh, scanner was that we were able to easily scan the wall uh, front fender in one go. Before, uh, with a different scanner, it was uh, losing track, uh, we had all kind of uh, 
mistakes and uh, artifacts uh, in the scan. And uh, this was quite impressive. So for today, we would love to show you uh, how we are going to scan the trunk lid. Maybe not with a complete one, but uh, at least a bigger part so we can design and we can 3D print uh, the spoiler. After that, Totwe, who is standing over here and waiting while I'm talking, uh, he is going to make the molds and gonna make some stuff from carbon fiber. Carbon fiber? Fiber. Fiber. <laughs> yeah, from carbon fiber. Yeah, so we are going to build it from carbon fiber, from uh, fiberglass and etc. And for that, we are going to use our sleeper. You can see our setup. Uh, I was talking about our sleeper from uh, the cooler. You can understand how sleepy it is. But uh, for proper 3D scanning, you definitely need the proper setup. But it's not gonna have high latency and etc. So, yeah. Let's, uh, let's move on. Also, this X-Star uh, Shining uh, software is definitely easy to use and uh, really simple. I can see that it requires some calibration. It was calibrated uh, at some point, but uh, let's do it again. You will see how to prepare the scanner for the scanning. So we have calibration plate over here. It's simply you just have to make sure that, uh, that the circle is green and in case you are on the side, you have to move it a little bit and that's it. And then have shaky hands and always read the manual because uh, it was telling me what to do and I was like just playing around for too long. One important thing is that this calibration plate is uh, glass, so keep it safe and don't destroy it. Now you can choose the existing project group or you can uh, create a new one and you can see that there are different options for the scanning modes. Uh, so you can choose the portrait, you can try to scan Rocker's face, but uh, it's gonna be a huge mess. So it's better to work on the face. Uh, which is much better one. Also, you can uh, choose uh, texture or features. We definitely have lots of texture on the faces, so we can use that. Uh, not too many features <laughs> on the rocket face. <laughs> yeah, that's what he was thinking about. But uh, anyways, uh, jokes aside, yeah, you can scan the portraits, uh, you can use it for different kind of uh, use cases. I know, uh, build some masks or anything else. <laughs> build for some colleagues. glasses. <laughs> what? For colleagues. For some colleagues. Masks, <laughs> and additionally, you have object scanning. You can choose uh, what are you going to scan, uh, small objects or medium and large objects. I bet this one is uh, medium or large. And additionally, you have to choose how you would love to align them. I mean, the different parts of the uh, scan of the object and you can uh, do it in uh, two different ways. One is hybrid, so you can choose to follow the texture, markers and features. Features, I mean any kind of, uh, I know, different stuff around. Uh, markers, we are going to use some markers, you can grab them. Uh, from my table. And uh, texture is when you have something rough uh, or some beards, you can follow that. Additionally, you can choose the resolution from high to medium to low. And uh, we are going to use medium because uh, it will be more than enough. But for uh, really important uh, stuff, for example, if you are building some brackets or something for the engine and you need exact points of the fixing holes, so you should definitely choose higher resolution. But for, for us, medium gonna be more than enough. Talking about the markers, uh, you can buy them from uh, different uh, 3D uh, scanning printing stores. You can buy them from Shining 3D uh, store and etc. Uh, but what we did, uh, because we had to use a lot of them, like crazy a lot. So we just designed our own and we printed uh, such huge sheets, like 10 of them or something. And uh, we've been using these kind of simple dots. So you have to 
uh, use them in uh, different shapes and uh, different markings. You have to avoid the patterns, so the scanner understands that it's in different place. So you can see these two are more closer than these three and etc. Keep that way, otherwise scanner can think that, oh, it's uh, the same spot. So I can align the same spot again and it's gonna mix up. So yeah, don't do that. And one more important thing to mention for the ender level uh, scanners, when you have a shiny panels or wadi, you're gonna need some kind of matte spray. For example, dry shampoo, you can use baby powder with uh, isopropyl alcohol. You can use a uh, special spray designated for uh, 3D scanning that's gonna fade out later by itself. It's a new, right now we have some dry shampoo, but for different cars and different projects uh, that we are scanning, we just use a designated spray uh, so we don't have to have a huge mess of the dry shampoo or anything else, it just fades away and that's it. Especially when you are scanning the interior, for example, when you are scanning uh, the dashboard, so you don't want any kind of uh, dry shampoo on your dashboard. Three. Right here, you can see the preview. Also on the side, there's indicator uh, for you to understand when you have to move uh, closer or a little bit away, so it's in the green spot and it's uh, the best position. So let's give it a try. It's really important to have the proper setup so you can see and there are no latency. It scans flawlessly, much faster and quicker. You don't waste your time after the scan to join everything, to clean the artifacts and etc. So yeah, it's, it saves your time. So you can see the scan. We can do, for example, if we see that there is something wrong over here, we can continue. It just catches again. You can pause. And when you finished, we can generate point cloud. And after the point cloud, uh, it simply generates the mesh. After generating the mesh, Matas can work it on any kind of CAD. Uh, software and it's easier for him to do measurements and etc. So the point cloud is ready. As you can see, it removed lots of artifacts. Uh, we can also, if you want to remove something more, clean up the scan and etc. The software is really great and easy to use. It's definitely uh, reused from their pro level scanners. That's why it's uh, already worked in and uh, everything is clean and definitely user friendly. So right now we have point cloud and we can just simply mesh the model. We can choose uh, if we want to fill some floating parts, uh, if you want to fill small holes and etc. I'm not going to change anything right now. We're just gonna use recommended parameters and that's it. And now you can simply see that it looks almost the same. It's definitely maybe last dot or so in the scans, but it's pretty much the same from what you can see in the real life. And now I can simply save it, send to Matas, so he can design uh, the brand new spoiler and we don't have to use any kind of foam or anything to build it. We can simply use CAD software to design it, to 3D print it and to try it. It's really important to use high accuracy scanner like uh, Shining 3D Instar because when you have the low accuracy scanner uh, that we were using before, you're gonna make uh, more mistakes it's gonna be much harder to make uh, parts uh, flush uh, to your texture, to your panels. So you're gonna waste your money, your time, and uh, definitely your nerves. Because every time when you're gonna 3D print them, you're gonna put them on, you're gonna see some gaps, and you're gonna think, where did that come from? So yeah, uh, choose better tools. Uh, this one, it's not an ad, it's uh, from my own experience. We've been using different tools and uh, Instar for hobbyists, 
is like perfect tool and uh, you can see from a dedicated uh, power source and everything else it even has uh, inside uh, some cooling fan or something like that so you can understand that this machine is uh, the proper 3d scanner it's not some kind of usb powered uh, device and it requires much more energy so it means that it has uh, better computing uh, better uh, processor or anything like that uh, i don't know what kind of uh, hardware it uses but it really really impressed me and uh, we're definitely going to use it more and uh, let's talk about what we are going to do with it as you already saw there was a little pause in our channel and uh, why it was we did some regroup we made some decisions and the decision was that we are going to release the series of E90 drift build and we are going to build two of them. One is for street league drifting and uh, it's gonna have a simple setup. We're gonna make it as economically as possible. Maybe we are going to build some kind of uh, steering lock uh, setup uh, that we're gonna use cheaper components or maybe reuse some uh, OEM parts. And another gonna be the pro level uh, drift car. We have that additional chassis you saw with the rear end crashed. We are going to build some panels from the composites uh, like fiberglass, Kevlar and etc. Uh, additionally, we are going to replace the roof. Uh, we are going to build the roll cage. And uh, why I said that uh, we will talk about uh, the Instar a little bit more because we were talking with Shining 3D. And they told us that, guys, we are going to support you. You can use the scanner. Maybe if you would love, we can send you the better one, the pro level. So uh, it's gonna be definitely easier for us to design a thing, to scan, to have the whole car inside the PC. We can work on the interior. We can work on the outside. We can work on everything. We have to build bash bars. We have to build different brackets for the interior to build uh, the dashboard. So lots of things gonna be built. And for the, one of the builds, we are going to use N54. And for the pro level build, we are going to use something different. Let us know in the comments, what do you think we are going to use? And that's it for today. Uh, we wanted to show you uh, the progress of the body kit. We wanted to update you about what's gonna happen, uh, what we are going to build, why we did a pause to our channel. And uh, we are not going to leave you out in the space uh, without the updates of our different projects. For example, Golf, E30, E46 uh, drift build. We are going to do the series of E90 and then some additional update episodes about different uh, projects are gonna come up. For example, when we're gonna have some bigger update about the Golf, we are going to show you. And when we're gonna have the body ready uh, of the E30 uh, for something more, uh, we are going to uh, do it. We are definitely going to film and keep the uh, content how we were doing things. So during the update, you can see how it was done uh, but it's not gonna be that detailed uh, as much as uh, e90s uh, drift builds so stay tuned don't forget to subscribe uh, press that push notification button and you're not gonna miss any of the episodes thank you again for joining us and see you next time bye i can't wait when i will be able to play with this beast and with another one two different cars. It's always better than one. It's time to call Matas. We need spoiler. Bye bye. Don't listen to my calls. Bye. Bye.